Not the Nerd O'Clock News, Q4 2020. The facts as I know them are not facts but theories. Thus, elements of the following fantastical, known partial truths may be founded upon fragments of fruity fiction. And any similarity such content might manifest to entities and events within your realm of reality is purely coincidental. Capacitor Complex – A Video With Fewer Frills should you happen to be viewing this content in the immediate present and NVIDIA's controversial Ampere architecture is still regarded as recreationally relevant, or have stumbled upon it while researching a retro build with the aim to preserve fond memories and embody a golden era when graphics cards were real graphics cards, here is a cautionary saga to consider prior to dispersing your hard-earned donations. NVIDIA's homegrown Founders Editions of both the RTX 3080 and 3090 did not incorporate the same reference design as was released to the company's authorised board partners. Though the cooling assemblies of the Green Fleet's native flagships has traditionally differed from those manufactured and distributed by such third parties as Asus, Gigabyte and MSI, the layout of components on the PCB beneath was universally implemented. In contrast to its founding forefathers, Ampere's green bloods were custom incarnations, harbouring significant departures from NVIDIA's nominal template, which nonetheless disclosed detailed guidelines regarding the specific parts and parameters necessary to ensure stable fabrication. Despite NVIDIA's supposed due diligence, many manufacturers elected to flout these guidelines. Some claimed they were cutting corners to maximise margins, while others viewed it as basic negligence, though the consequences, once again, were borne by the aggravated consumer. Barely one week after the most papery launch party since a full-scale papier-mâché Patriot missile crashed into a life-size origami aircraft carrier Um, uh, pardon me, but we're really tight on time here. Would you mind very much coming to the point? Ah, uh, quite so, quite so, dear fellow human. These are multi-layer ceramic chip capacitors. They're extremely effective at filtering electrical crosstalk at high frequencies. Those are polymer tantalum electrotic capacitors. They are equally resistant to noise generated at low frequencies. NVIDIA's indigenous RTX 3080 used two of these and four of those. NVIDIA allegedly stated to its board partners, best use at least one of these. Some board partners, Zotac and Gigabyte, replied, no. We'd rather have six of those. Angry early adopters questioned, Why are games crashing when my factory overclocked RTX 3080 is running at its box boost frequency? AMD fan people said, ah ha 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 A certain hardware hobbyist, oh okay, it's Igor's lab, right? Theorised, perhaps it's because Nvidia did not expressly state to use some of these and some of those, thus leaving the option for board partners to minimise costs by using six of those. I've tested Founders Editions with two of these and four of those, and none of them crashed even when boosted beyond 2 GHz. Any semi-competent PCB appointer knows these work better than those. The YouTube hype machine, basically Jay-Z Two Cents, declared, These are more expensive than those. Gigabyte and Zotac short-changed their customers and Colourful told me not to review the sample unit they sent because it was unstable at high frequencies. Other unluckily lucky RTX 3080 owners cried, Look, my Founders Edition is crashing too. And what about my MSI Ventus? They both have at least one of these. So it can't be just those that cause the crashing. One prolific YouTube bar chart belcher, hardware unboxed, explained, It isn't. It's complicated. One of these can make things more stable, 
but the six of those that Gigabyte used were of considerably higher quality, and even Zotac's economised design adhered to Nvidia's base specification. We've reviewed two cards with both these and those, and they crash just as frequently, while my friend Nick also analysed two cards with both these and those, and they crashed in Windows but not Linux. Logical conclusion, it's a driver issue. A forlorn voice of the common person inquired, then why did Igor's lab state that Zotac's parent company, PC Partner, were changing the cards? Surely that in itself constitutes an admission of oversight and confirmation of a hardware defect. EVGA officially asserted, six of those cannot pass real-world application testing. Gigabyte formally contested, it is false that six of those could independently cause a hardware crash. We used six premium grade of those on both our cards, and they provide more than adequate power capacity and resistance levels. Asus cheerfully chimed in, During development, we determined that our cards boosted higher when using six of these. Galaxy and Gainwood insisted, We used mostly those and some of these. Our designs wholly conform to NVIDIA's recommendations. Zotac mumbled, We're looking into it. In the meantime, just go and eat some mooncake, will you? The hardware hobbyist, Igor's lab, that started it all followed up by declaring, The only reason some cards with six of those aren't exhibiting instabilities is because the chips they're delivering power to just happen to be natively more resistant to rapid voltage fluctuations, whilst cards with these and those that are unstable are inherently less tolerant. But irrespective of chip quality, there is no disputing that a combination of these and those remains a superior solution. Vociferous critics postulated, If NVIDIA had allowed board partners to audition cards with something other than their pre-baked verification tool, then these faults would have been identified and rectified prior to public distribution. People with no time to read or listen to reviewers, experts or manufacturers endlessly pontificating in diametrically opposed echo chambers to preserve their own credibility, cried, Any chance you might quit peddling fear, uncertainty and doubt? until supply is remotely sufficient to meet demand, so that an avalanche of impulsive RMAs doesn't extend customer waiting lists even further. <clears throat> Nvidia might well have responded, Worry not, CUDA comrades in arms. Next time, you can all have access to our exclusive enhanced reference design for a modest surcharge. For now, here are some new drivers which fix the problem. A contingent of keen observers observed, well, yes, they fix the problem, but by reducing the boost frequency. Astute analysts analysed, not exactly. Rather, they attenuate the peaks and augment the troughs, thereby reducing the amplitude of the fluctuations and with it, the noise and crosstalk such fluctuations precipitate. One of about seven existing RTX 3080 owners who weren't high-profile tech influencers piped up, I'm losing one frame a second. This is an absolute outrage. I demand an RMA. Customer service reps concluded, You're guaranteed a minimum boost frequency, which your card is comfortably attaining. Beyond that, it's luck of the draw. If every buyer was assured a golden sample, we'd be fulfilling more RMAs than a chocolate kettle wholesaler and lucky to sell a single card per month, which I know we are anyway, but that's a separate issue. These latest drivers are the ones your unit should have shipped with, and the fact that the performance and stability of your acquisition was compromised for the brief period it took for NVIDIA to release them is indeed regretful, but not grounds for an RMA. Had we been granted closer contact with NVIDIA's technical division and permitted to subject our products to a variety of non-simulated workloads, this entire fiasco could well have been avoided. For now, your purchase is doing exactly what it says on the tin. So stop watching smug, self-indulgent technophiles trading 3D Mark scores achieved on stupidly profligate and cosmically overclocked setups, be happy with the hand you were dealt, and play some bloody games. One fundamental rule of life is everything in moderation. 
and not a wiser piece of advice could apply when densely appointing compact printed circuit boards with several squillion nanotons of oscillating silicon requiring critically fine apportionments of current. Whether NVIDIA, its partners, a collective lack of developmental diligence, impulsive hyperbole, or a cocktail of all four were to blame, from a fundamental design perspective, the prevailing view suggested that a cosmopolitan population of capacitors was preferable for this particular use case, but ultimately not a definitive assurance of quality nor stability. This video was brought to you by NOTHING!